again, everyone. Welcome back to the Fandom Zone podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Charles Skaggs, as we get ready to talk Krypton, the season finale, season two finale. And I'm here with my co-host, Krypton's favorite co-host, Jesse Jackson. Hi, Jesse. How are you today? Hello, Charles. We are here to discuss the last days of Krypton. <laughs> Maybe. Yes. Maybe. See what I did there? I see what you did there. Yes, uh, happy uh, Sunday, Charles, and um, we are here to talk the season slash series finale for now right. for Krypton. Right, and we'll talk about that more later, yes. but uh, but yeah, for right now, obviously, we're going to talk the Alpha and the Omega, the... <clears throat> Excuse me. Episode 10 of Krypton Season 2, the Season 2 finale. Like Jesse said, possible series finale. We'll find out. Uh, teleplay by Luke Calto and Cameron Welsh. Uh, Luke Calto wrote the Season 1 episode, The Word of Rao, and uh, the Season 2 episode, Danger Close. And Cameron Welsh is the showrunner for Krypton, uh, has written a few episodes, including the Season 1 episode, House of L. And the season two premiere, Light Years from Home. And as we talked, he uh, directed last week's episode. So uh, this episode is also directed by Ruba Nada, who's new to the show. So I thought that was an interesting choice um, to direct the season two finale. But, it is. Uh, but uh, thought she did a good job. So, mm-hmm. all right. Yes. Um, Jesse, this was a big episode, obviously. Uh, what do you think about this one in general before we get into our main topics? I thought it was a pretty good episode. Um, I I obviously think – I feel like the showrunners thought they were going to get a third season. Right. Uh, because they did not wrap everything up as I think as clean as you would have liked to. Um, good – good – good episode but not a what i would have liked a little better kind of wrap up would you would you have liked something that um it would have been more of a definitive ending had in with the expectation that maybe the show wouldn't be picked up for that third season as opposed to a cliffhanger yeah um i always i always think that josh whedon um did it right with buffy and angel right he always wrapped up the storyline that if they got canceled, there was a satisfying ending, but left something open so that they weren't starting from they a total pick, blank page. In the they, next could, they could pick up on in, for yes. the next se- season to uh, the next season premiere. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Joss Whedon was really good about that. Um, obviously. Pretty much all our regulars in this one, no real guest stars, apart from a couple minor characters. But, um, so let's dive into our main topics. All right. All right. Uh, topic number one. Topic number one. Obviously, we need to talk about uh, the General Zod family. We need to talk about Segel, Lyda, and General Zod, who these three characters are obviously the f- central focus of this story. And... Um, Sego and Lyda come up with a solution to deal with General Zod and take him off the board. So I'm kind of curious about what you thought about that and um, and how you thought the downfall of General Zod played out in this episode. So the ultimate uh, solution was a pretty good one. Right. Um, similar to the man who had everything, the way they tied that story up. Yeah, the, the, um, the Alan Moore and Dave Givens yeah. Superman annual. Yeah. So that was a fitting um, ending. Um, I liked... I liked the... At first, I liked the one-on-one kind of battle right. that between, you know, father and son. Segal versus General Zod, the big yeah. throwdown. But then it ended up being two against one. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I was okay with that too. Um, I kind of like that. Yeah. I mean, it, you know. Um, I kind of like that Lyda got her own piece of the action. Yes. Parent versus child. Um, I, I, I liked it, but I wanted a little bit more. 
I don't know what I wanted, but I wanted a little bit more. I I, I enjoyed the storyline, but it it didn't feel like enough closure. Yes, and also, um, I don't know. I wasn't moved by Seg's speech so much to buy into all of a sudden now then um, the soldiers oh. Oh, We're not bring... going to follow Zod anymore, you know. I mean, I when, he, when, he, when he was talking bit... when he was talking to the Kryptonians, and he wanted to bring yeah. everybody over uh, to his side. Yeah, line... I don't. I mean, I understand um, Lyda talking, right. and I think that would have had because they're loyal to her. But it seemed. I don't know if it was earned enough. What were your thoughts on that? Well, I get I get why they had Segel do it because he's an L, and. <clears throat> He's General Zod's father, so maybe they're a little yeah. bit more patriarchal in this society. But um, you know, and, and elves are supposed to be that source of inspiration of hope, like Val Els talked about. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I feel that, uh, yeah, like I, I was a little let down by the speech as well. I thought it wasn't, it was nice, but it was a little far too brief, and I don't think it really had the weight. At least the the way it was uh, directed, I don't think it carried off as well. So it just seemed to me like, okay, we need to make a speech here to get everybody over, like it was a, a plot point that needed to be addressed more than something that naturally flowed out of the story. I'm glad you felt that way because I thought maybe I was just being no. a little harsh on the show. Um, I mean, I get that, um, you know, and I'm all about. Aaron Sorkin, right? Uh, West you know, Wing guy, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, those kind of, um, you know, uh, you know, um, Frank Capra, yeah, you know, kind of that, you know, Mr. Smith goes to Washington, and all these different, you know, classic um, monologues and yeah. speeches right, that you know right. change how things are. Um, I just think this was a little it, underwhelming. Yeah, and, and like, okay, so that was enough to me that I'm going to um, drop my weapon in front of one of the most violent, cruel dictators in the world. And we have seen he does not take fools lightly, and you could have just as easy been killed by a blaster. Yeah. So it, it just – it it's a small nitpick, um, and I think – um well what I, if go ahead if if we knew we were going to get another season then you could go okay you could go back to you know people were swept in by their emotions and now then they're going to start doubting like why did we follow this what's right. going on so um I don't know we'll see well I think uh, to play devil's advocate here yeah um they are coming off of like hey our moon just blew up yes and if you notice in that scene, it seemed like they weren't really quite coming around after Seg's speech. It was only after Zod was trying to um, oppress them yes. and and, and um, threaten them in front of everybody. That's mm-hmm. when it seemed like the tide turned. It's that. Yeah. So I don't. So I don't know if it was so much the speech as it was Zod's uh, his arrogance and his. Mm-hmm. Um, authoritarian uh, dictatorship that that's that finally broke them and, and made them switch. And I also think that um, Lido is known. I think she's respected by right. the ranks. So I think her saying that does help. Well, in the fact that they thought she was dead because they mm-hmm. saw her being yeah. killed and here she is. She turns up alive. So that probably shocked some people. Like, wait, weren't you dead? Yes. And right here she is going, yeah, well, that was just an imposter. My, you know, my son, you know, staged this. Mm-hmm. So when they're kind of confronted with that resurrection, yeah, they should be going like, wait, wait a minute. What's going on here? So maybe, maybe it was kind of like the combination of everything. Maybe it wasn't just like, it wasn't just the speech. It wasn't just this. 
and maybe it was just kind of everything. I mean, that's the way you could kind of look at it, but I agree yeah. it should have been a little more clear. Yeah. And like I said, it's a small nitpick. It right. is a nitpick. It isn't like, oh, this is – I totally was lost and right. it took me out of the show. Not at all. Yeah. Good. Uh, okay. Um, Seg, uh, who's coming back to Krypton to Kandor in that skimmer after surviving Wegthor. Yes. Has to break the news to everybody that Kim is dead. Mm-hmm. And uh, they end up having a nice little uh, toast to him later on, which I kind of liked. Yes. Uh, I thought that was a good scene. I thought that was a really good scene. And I thought the, um, the, uh, him, he got a nice send off, a lot of respect. And, uh, so I, I thought that was well done. Yeah, I thought so. Um, and just as a tease, yeah, a certain, co-host right who i'm going to take to vegas because <laughs> he is hitting predictions i do okay so good um about a certain yeah well, suit. yeah well, We're, so, well i'm just teasing that yeah, when yeah. i saw that i went charles charles i think anyway, I'll, i think ahead. i'll uh, we'll talk about that in our third segment okay today. very nice so yes Good. But uh, but yeah, one of my predictions came true in this Absolutely. one. Absolutely. So I was glad about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, sorry, I'm struggling with my uh, asthma here a little bit. Not really okay. asthma, but more like a, a bronchial infection. So apologies, uh, yeah. apologies to everybody for my crappy voice today. No um, okay, so uh, let's see here. So ultimately, Seg and Lyda decide they... they they have their big fight with, with General Zod. And we talked about how they kind of each had their moment and then they kind of tag teamed him. So it was almost like a two on one, which I don't know how fair that was, but um, it needed to be done. So, and it was kind of interesting to have the mother and father versus their son. Yes. We don't really get to see that kind of fight very often. And uh, ultimately, they decide, well, we can't put him in the Phantom Zone because he'll just get out somehow. Yes. So they decide instead to use the Black Mercy as a kind of yes. ironic uh, way of getting revenge because Zod put his mother Lyda under the spell of the Black Mercy. So now Lyda gets to turn the tables and put him under that. Mm-hmm. So what did you think of that resolution to, uh, I- to dealing with him? I thought it was perfect. Um, it is um, Chekhov's Black Mercy plant. Yeah. Uh, you know. Um, Chekhov's Mercy. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Because, um, it, you know, the idea, um, and just in case people are like, what the heck are you talking about? Right. Um, uh, Chekhov's gun is a saying that the playwright Chekhov said if there is a you show a gun in the first act – Someone needs to be shot in the right. third act. It's basically, a plot a, a plot device. Yeah, that is introduced so, solely solely for a payoff later on. Yeah, yeah, and so to have that, um, to actually get that where they had, I thought they had used Black Mercy very well, and now then when you look at they did. Um, a great job of using this again. So I was very happy. Um, we had talked about that. Um, if you don't want to fight it too strong, it will work. And I think in this case, he doesn't want to fight it. You know, he wants to, he believes this. Right. Um, so I, I was really happy with that. You know, you see him going yet yeah, conquer and you see, his mother and father are next to him, believing in him. It's his, um, I- his ideal fantasy yeah, world. It is that, truly th- his that they, they say idea. They're, they say they're proud of him. Yes. And um, it, you, you, there's this one great shot where they're kind of both looking at him, and he's in the foreground. Yeah. And he almost looks like he has a tear of joy in his eye. He does. Because he's so happy. Yeah, which yeah. is great. Right. I, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Now, I kind of wondered, though, um, why they decided to go with 
the Black Mercy instead of the Phantom Zone. Mm-hmm. Because um, if you remember, Zod said he escaped the Black Mercy before. Mm-hmm. So why would you put him under something that he could potentially escape from? Well, but didn't he escape from the Phantom Zone as well? Uh, we don't know. I mean, presumably. I mean, he got yeah. out, but that, mm-hmm. I think, would be a much more difficult circumstance to get out of than the, than getting the will to overcome the Black Mercy. So, and I will make the other argument yeah. that they they will have him in a prison so they are guarding his body while his mind is with the black mercy so if he did get break out the black mercy he would be in a prison and there would be guards so they would have another chance okay. to try to subdue him versus if they put him in the phantom zone who knows when he gets out if he gets out of the phantom zone where he will appear and they won't know that he's escaped I think I think that's a fair argument. I think that's a good argument. I'll give you that. I I, 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 I get your point on that. I I, agree. Yeah. I know I I respect your opinion because I think okay. that I think that's a very valid uh, argument you okay, just made. Good. So good. So I'll give you All points right. on that one. Thank you, sir. Uh, my my imaginary points. Yes. Yes, indeed. Exactly. Um. So, um. Ultimately, of course, and we'll talk about this in our third segment that. Um, Seg has to uh Seg still has to deal with the the problem with um Jorel being yes. out there and we'll talk about that in a third segment like I said but um but ultimately that's kind of where he's left as this series ends. Mm-hmm. Um he seems to have the respect of the people. House L seems to be back in favor again. Mhm. But uh, but yeah, his son is still out there. And... Yeah, and I wonder. Um, you know, we weren't quite sure. At least I wasn't. Right. Um, how how Krypton is um, is being ruled? So is is Seg now like is the Science Council back ruling? Is he going to help them come up with a new form of government? You know the 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 rank system or the right K system the should cast, be gone. Cast, yeah, the yeah. cast. Yeah. So, um, well, we don't just... know. We, we don't know because we don't know what the fallout's going to be from the, the Sagittari where the rankless yeah. that Zod drafted yeah. into his army. But now that he's gone, yeah. what's the need for them to mm-hmm. be? Yeah. Are they all just going to stay soldiers? Cause I don't think they want to. No. So, I mean, they were all conditioned, but once that conditioning is broken, yeah, um, they're going to probably want to go back to living their own lives again, presumably. Yeah, I, I would think that would be, sure. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of repercussions that, uh, a lot of loose threads here. As, Absolutely. As far as that goes. And, um, you know, you still got Kryptonopolis, which I thought was the capital of Krypton. Maybe mm-hmm. I'm wrong. Because um, I think that's that's where... After Kandor is taken, that's kind of becomes the capital. So maybe at this point, Kandor is the capital of Kandor or of Krypton mm-hmm. until it gets taken, and then Kryptonopolis becomes the new capital. You know, by yeah. by Brainiac. I'm not sure how that works. I, mean, I don't think it's ever been explained. I don't think so either. Not, I, I can't recall offhand. Maybe it was, but maybe I can't recall offhand how that worked. Yeah, I think uh, so. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move on to our second topic. Okay. Uh, I want to talk about Adam Strange, who is pretty has a, some big moments in this one. Nissa Vex and uh, Val L. Let's talk about these three characters because they they're kind of intertwined in this this episode. And uh, Adam is obviously coping with the loss of his legs. Nissa is still focused on getting her son Jor El back, and uh, Val L. It has to uh, corral the resistance, cobble a new resistance together for one last push against General Zod. Yeah, I I liked all about this. Um, You know, Nyssa trying to be supportive to Adam. Adam going, oh, these Krypton painkillers are good stuff. Right. And he's sharing the way you do... um, I think that was really well done. 
And I like how I did not see what she was doing. I, of course, then I normally am very naive, but um, I love how she ended up asking things and catching enough that she could take the device and go search for her son. Nissa, you so mean, yeah, yeah, Nissa yeah. did. I thought that was very clever and so well done. Yeah, there's kind of a standoff, um, isn't there? Because yeah, um, Adam, she gets Adam to talk about how to use the Zeta Beam device. Yeah, and as and, he's a little, you know, loopy. Yeah, uh, he then, said, and, "Yeah," and then you know she gets control of it. Mm-hmm. And everybody comes in, and Valel confronts her, tells her not to do that because you don't know it. She's like, Valel's going, you don't know where you're going to end up. Yeah. And Nissa is desperate at this point. She's like, look, Brainiac is out there. My son is out there. I've got to do something. And her plan is to go to Ran to uh, to get Sardath, the, uh, the father of... Um, uh, Adam Strange's love, Alana, who ultimately becomes his wife in the comics, Alana mm-hmm. Strange. And he's apparently this big expert on um, time and space. Yes. So she figures he can find Brainiac. Did he go to, did he go to a certain academy? Yeah, maybe the Pydonian Academy on, on a certain Gallifrey, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yes, maybe. maybe so. Well, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe he did like... Um, correspondence courses on I like that. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But uh yeah, kind of a little bit of a doc. We know you had to do a Doctor Who digression once I meant to type in space, right? Like you it was required. It was required, exactly. Yeah. So, um so that's her plan. And so she gets all of this device and then she travels to somewhere. We're not told where. Mm-hmm. Um and uh so what did you think of Nissa's journey in this episode? So the, the the kind of cliffhanger they left her with, I, I really, I, I liked her passion. I liked her stubbornness. Right. Though I was a little confused. Does she have a plan, or is she just going in the uh, universal haystack, right. looking for a needle? Yeah, like that. That's my only. I, I don't. I at think least. It, I did not feel like they explained that very well where she's going, but I said, maybe I just missed it. What, what do you think? I don't think she, I think her whole plan is this. Okay. She figures maybe the device will take me back to Sardath on Ran. Okay. And then I can go look for him there. And that okay. that's that. I think that is the extent of it. I okay. think that's as far as it goes. Okay. Um, beyond that, I don't think she has a plan. I think she's just, She's thinking very emotionally right now, understandably, okay. because her son is out there. Sure. Um, so now she goes to this planet. We Again, we don't know which one she's on. We're not told. No. And uh, she seems some strange things. Mm-hmm. Like she comes across this guy who's been a little crispy fried. Yes. And he's going, you know, look up, uh, look up. And he, like, dies in front of her or something. And then she comes across... Um, some other charred corpses, and then she ends up coming, like, she walks along the beach later on, and there's, like, some wreckage, and on, like, a the side of a tree or something, or a rock, there's an omega symbol burned into the rock, mm-hmm. and, um, and then she looks up and sees, like, dozens of winged soldiers... Uh, flying overhead, but they're shadowed. We can't tell what they are. I have some theories. So is it, and and you, you rightly so, Charles, yes. with love in your heart, yes, mocked my pronunciation, yes. But um, is it there a planet of Thangor? I believe where Th- Thanagar, yeah, Thanagar, where there is this whole police force that look like. Bird men, right? Like, like maybe hawk men, perhaps. Yes. Yeah. Well, there, there's that. Yeah. So that so, is what I immediately when I saw that right. scene, I went, "Oh, are we going to get, you know, seeing that?" So I really like that. 
so here so here's here's the interesting things about this all right tell so me the interesting let, all right all right so let's set this up a little bit okay um for those who don't read the comics uh the planets of ran and thanagar hate one another right and adam strange of obviously uh and Sard- sardath and alana they're from ran thanagar the thanagarians are the home of um the the alien kind of warriors known as the Hawkmen, and you know, which uh, obviously was um, uh, this alien race that was created in the '60s when DC Comics revived Hawkman as a as a kind of alien cop, and yeah. and you know Shara, his wife Shara was Hawkwoman, and they came from from this planet instead of Earth. Uh, they came from Thanagar. So DC kind of kept this race around, even though they kind of played off and on with like, well, is Hawkman from Earth? Is he just reincarnated? The like the the Thanagarian Qadar Hall version uh was maybe like a like a life. One of his um because he's reincarnated so often that that was one of his lives. He was an alien at one point. Mm-hmm. Um so there's a, there's a very convoluted history with Hawkman. But, at the same token, we have this Omega symbol. And recently, with, with the New 52, um, especially with Jeff Johns uh, and Grant Morrison, they've associated the Omega symbol with, um, ever since Final Crisis, which was written by Grant Morrison, they've associated the Omega symbol with Darkseid. Ah, okay. So, um, so the question is, are they teasing Darkseid? Because why else would they do an Omega symbol? And we didn't see exactly, we kind of presume, oh, that's the Hawkman up in the sky. Yes. So, if Darkseid is, is in play, are those actually parademons and not Hawkmen? Okay, I'll buy into that. That's that's I, that's something I think to uh, to keep in mind. If we ever get a third season, I had not thought about that, but I think that is a very I, I will because, I will give you Jesse points to right. that theory. Oh, excellent! I got Jesse, <laughs> yay, Jesse points. But uh, but yeah, I thought because I thought it was a really interesting decision. If they're going to show the Hawkmen, why didn't they show them? I mean, they're all silhouetted; they're in shadow. Because mm-hmm. the way we're looking at them is that the sun is behind them, so they look shadowed to Nyssa. Mm-hmm. So, are we just are we supposed to think they're Hawkmen, but they're actually parademons, or are they actually Hawkmen? We don't know at this yeah. point. Or has Darkseid taken over Thanagar? So and I would so, hope. So, do you think that she's on Thanagar? Do you think she's on Ran? Has Thanagar attacked Ran, or has Darkseid attacked Ran? Yeah, I would want to see. I wanted to see the Hawkman. Right. Just I personally. Yes. Well, hopefully we'll get a third season somewhere. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we'll see that make that happen. But it was a very interesting tease, and it's very frustrating. Again, another frustrating cliffhanger that uh, hopefully will be resolved. We don't know. Mm Hmm. But uh, but it's very interesting, and this is out there, completely in the dark at this point. Yes. All she knows is I gotta look for this guy named Sardath, and mm-hmm. um, and she's confronted with all of this. So, good luck, Nissa. We'll see what happens. Yes. And, but um, we'll find out. Hopefully, hopefully, fingers yeah. crossed. I liked the idea that. She is not sitting around waiting. Right. Uh, you know, she is. She's not relying on everybody. She, yeah, she's not relying on anybody else. Yeah. She's going to take charge and, you know, I'm going to be the one who has to get my son back. Yeah, I agree. Because Segel's got Lida and she's got all this drama. So it's just like, fine, I'll go do this by myself. Yeah, very yeah. good. Yeah. Now, um, picking back up with Adam before we move on. Uh, Adam gets uh, some new hardware. 
in this story. He does. You, you know, they have a they have a fun little scene that after they take down General Zod, there's this big party and in the Outlands and everybody gets drunk in New Lorvin. And it's kind of funny because we get to actually see Val L, uh, you know, who's obviously the Mr. Prim and Proper old statesman like. Uh, we get to see him pretty hammered in this story, yes. which is kind of funny. It was very funny. And Adam uh, is also drunk, but Valel decides, hey, Adam, I got something for you. And he gives him some kind of leg braces to help him walk. And we also get to see him in kind of a more traditional Adam Strange like garb, a red suit with a jetpack. So we finally get to see Adam Strange with a jetpack, at least. Yeah, and, and that was a great scene. I have a jetpack. Boom, it hits his head. Yeah, he does it inside. Yeah, like, duh. Yeah. But he was a little bit um, feeling think, no pain. Yeah, he was probably pretty, um, pretty numb by everything, yeah. Yeah, and so you had said you had wished you had wanted to see the red suit right. and the jetpack. And um, we didn't get the helmet. That, we didn't get the helmet. No, but but I think that was really well done to um, show that it's kind of an echo echo skeleton. Exo, that, ex, exo, yeah, yeah, exoskeleton. That, yeah. That's what's helping him right um, use his legs. Right. Um, so I was very happy with that. Thought like, oh, that was very cool. Uh, so uh, it, very very slick. Yeah, if we do get a third season, I hope they figure out something about his, to deal with that, to address that yeah. problem. Yeah, and I do think... Because I don't want to see him just flying around with leg braces. I want to see him back in, back mm-hmm. in play, play, back restored. So I think, I think they're going to keep him in leg braces. Well, I think that's going to be the way he does, the way he... The okay. way he walks and the way he All right. he'll be able to walk using the leg braces, but it will be his version of like Iron Man has to have the plate to keep his heart from going bad. Right. I think that would I I believe that's where they were going to try to go. Okay. But we will see. Yeah, we'll see. Obviously, we don't know if they're going to resolve this, but at this moment, that's where yeah. Adam is left off. Absolutely. And uh, so I thought that was very cool. All right. Anything else about these three characters before we move on? Nope. I um I nope, I think that was well done and I'm good. Okay. Third and final topic. Lobo and Brainiac. Mm-hmm. So uh, as yours truly suggested, way back uh after we saw said goodbye to Lobo with episode three mm-hmm. of this season, I threw out the idea that hey, maybe we'll see Lobo in the season finale. Yeah, and you also mentioned last episode that maybe you hire a certain bounty hunter right. to help find Brainiac. your... Yeah, yeah, and therefore find your son. Yep. Um, so I get so I got that one right. <laughs> Those two right. Mm-hmm. I was very happy I, about that. But I felt like it was... Forced? Maybe a little forced and rushed. Yeah. Because I felt like they were setting up for the next season. Yeah. And and because we may not get a second season, it, it felt like just a, well, we really loved Lobo. Yeah. Let's get him one more shot in this season versus if you knew there was going to be a third season, you'd go, well, we didn't get to see much, but they were just, they were teasing that he'll have a pretty big um, storyline next season. Well, like, well like, like I said, when I made my theory prediction way back, yeah, um, I figured Seg's got to f- come up with some way to find Brainiac. Yes. And Lobo, as I suggested, could be that way, could be that, that means. Yes. So, um, so essentially they strike a deal here. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that Seg is going to help Lobo find Brainiac if Lobo re- helps him rescue his son, Jor-El. So mm-hmm. presumably this would set up a, an eventual reunion with Nyssa. Like perhaps somehow Nyssa on her own comes across Brainiac. And yeah. uh, and then Seg has to rescue both of them or who knows what. But, right. um, but Seg has essentially, this is... This is really his only way of finding Brainiac at this point. 
So Absolutely. I so I kind of felt like it had to be done. Yes. The way given what they wrote about, you know, given the way that the writers kind of painted themselves into this corner, this seemed to be their only out as far as I could tell. Okay, I could see that. So so it may feel a little forced and I get that. Um but I feel like it's something they had to do. To okay. Get, to get to get Seg off off of Krypton and out there looking for Brainiac. Okay, I, I can buy that. Yeah, so that's where I'm coming from. But uh, okay. uh, Brainiac, as we find out, um, still has Jor-El. He's got his big skull ship. He's all happy. And um, he teases that they have a long journey ahead of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, we find out that, hey, they're headed for Earth. And Brainiac tells Jor-El um, that... Once there, he's going to be a god among men because mm-hmm. he knows what happens with Superman. Right. Once he's in the, the yellow sun mm-hmm. and bas- soaking up all that, that um, yellow sun radiation and solar radiation um, and gets his superpowers. So essentially, I guess we get the impression that Brainiac intends to use Jor-El as um, – as a as a something he can control, like a Superman of his own that he can control to help subjugate Earth. What did you think? And what did you think about that cliffhanger? Uh, you know, I thought it was okay. Um, it it's a bit a bit of like mustache twirling, like ha ha ha. Yeah, yeah. But. Um, and I I know I'm repeating the same thing, mm-hmm. but this this did not feel like a a season finale right. as more as a we weren't trying to finish this season we're just trying to set up next season and yeah. and I think you, you well, I think did they were trying to keep they trying well. they were trying to keep people hooked to come back for a third season yeah but you got to give them a payoff right and and I don't think there was enough of a payoff well there was the general zod they got the payoff on that yeah, his, but you know his, his storyline was closed. Yeah, but it was kind of a weak. I, I'm just saying it. it okay. To me, I was I was a you little. Were let, you were let down. Yeah, I was let down. <laughs> I also have a nitpick. Um, the, you know, at the very beginning, uh, Zod goes, "We're heading to Earth." Right. And and it just. You assume he's saying that in Krypton? Yeah, Kryptonian, and, yeah. Yeah, and so I always like it when they say Terra versus Earth because, right, right. you know, like almost every planet would call themselves Earth yeah. because you originally – you don't know there's other planets out there. So you would call your planet whatever your word for Earth is. Right. Um, and so I, I just am always a little bothered by that. Yeah. But so, uh, just the minor thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. They, how it maybe. Well, maybe they knew it was called Earth because Adam Strange was from Earth. Maybe so. I yes. don't know. Like maybe okay. the, maybe that was the name they adopted. Like, OK, okay. I, he's from this planet. He calls it Earth. I guess we'll call it Earth. Too. OK. Yeah. I, I like that. I, I'll buy that, too. OK. OK. Because um, obviously we do have Adam representing Earth here. Um, yes. Lobo, I thought, had a funny um, reintroduction where oh. every, everybody's carrying on and they're laughing and, you know, they're laughing at Adam smashing his head into the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Um, and Lobo's laughing there right along with them. He just shows up. There's no big entrance. It just Seg looks over and is like, wait, I know that laughter. And then mm-hmm. he sees like Lobo relieving himself on a window. Yes. So what did you think about the way he was, re- he was brought back in? I thought it was pretty funny. Uh. I love that um, he wants to shake Seg's hand, and Seg's like, yeah, "You gotta right watch. That. You gotta watch that." <laughs> no, yeah, and um, and then the impressive. Well, I grew it myself. Yes, uh, was oh, yeah, yeah, funny. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was, yeah. uh, he turns around, and he doesn't zip up. Yeah, so want to take care of that business. Yeah, uh, it was good. It was. Um, I liked the. Um, you know, always love him saying, Segel. Seagull. Um, yeah, Seagull. Yeah, Seagull. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, just it's it's really, uh, you know, 
we didn't get enough of them. And like I said, my only downside is I felt like it was just kind of a Throw kind away. of an add on. We didn't get enough. Right. But yeah, I love I you know, I as I've said many times, I am not a Lobo fan, but Lobo on Krypton is good stuff. Yeah. He is really well done. The way I, way I think I would have done this those two scenes. Um, yes. I would have I would have actually ended it mm-hmm. the show and then like did a credit sequence and then after like a like a post credit scene. Yes. Like pick up post credits with like they're partying and Lobo's there. Mm-hmm. Do that and then also do um another post credit scene with Brainiac. Yeah, I think that would have been Do you think that would have been more effective the way Yes, it... I would have. Okay. I it, think that would have Cuz those, those two scenes kind of do feel like they're essentially like um you know like if for Marvel Cinematic Universe fans that they're they're kind of the post credits bonus scenes almost. Yeah, and, and like I an think epilogue. that would have that would have felt much better. Okay. I agree. Okay. Yeah, good good job. Okay. Uh anything else about this episode? Before we move on. No, uh, like I said, it was I, I was a little disappointed in it um, because I wanted more. But overall, it was it was yeah. a fine episode. It just wasn't I, I I wanted more. Yeah, the only the only other thing that we got that I f- we forgot to talk about, um, Jaina and Dev. Mm-hmm. Uh, they get we they did get a payoff there, didn't we? Yeah, we did. They get they kiss. Mm-hmm. So and there's this like little awkward moment where they stop right as Lida comes in. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, you were you seem you know you were a proponent of that relationship. So what did you think about that? Yes, I was glad to get the payoff of the ship, and uh, I I um, they both seem to embrace right the idea that they're t- there for each other. So I, I really like this a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Once Lida finds out, though, it's going to be really weird because hey, you know, she had sex with them, Dev M. She was involved. That was her boyfriend. Eh. And uh, now he's with her mom. It's all in the family. All in the family, Charles. You. You. <laughs> yeah. You. Um, and then uh, later, uh, mm-hmm. Jaina and Dev M, they get this report from, I think, I think it was Val or something, that there was this um, huge chunk of Wegthor that yes. uh, crash landed. So he thinks that, well, maybe there's some survivors. Mm-hmm. And um, so they go out there, they check it, and uh, they come across Doomsday, who's, yes. and they're like, oh, I can't believe this. And, and he's, we kind and, of knew that. And he's, was fro- happen. And, he, and he's frozen in ice. Yeah, we talked about, you know, yeah. we talked about that, that he might fall back to Krypton. Yes. But, uh, but yeah, so Doomsday is still in play, although he's technically frozen at the moment. Better mm-hmm. hurry up and throw him in the freezer. Yes. Um, now the question is, were there any other survivors, like a certain Jax Ur, perhaps? Yeah, I, what do you I think I, I was kind of hoping the obvious when they found the person. Yeah. The obvious was it would be um, Doomsday. Yeah. I was hoping it would be um, Jaxer. Yeah, Jaxer instead. I think yeah. that would have been a nice twist. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But um, yeah. well, maybe they didn't want to pay for the extra actress to be in another episode. I don't know. Maybe yeah. they're trying to save on the budget. But yeah, no, um, I think that's very fair. But presumably, if Doomsday could get back to Earth or back to back to Earth, back to Krypton, um, maybe Jaxer could as well. Who Absolutely. Knows? So yeah. I'd, I wouldn't write her off just yet. So no, I all right. Neither. Anything else? No, no. Um, like I said, it was good, but uh, not great. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, I thought there were some good lines in this one. Uh, uh, good script- I did not write any down. You but didn't? go ahead. All right. You didn't write any down. All right. You didn't do your homework this week. No, no, no. <laughs> That's all right. I got. This I, was, a, a, I mean, you were, I, you were it, actually let down by this one. I was a little let down by the episode. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. That's okay. Uh, okay. Um, because you don't want to be, especially if it might be the last Krypton episode ever. Yeah. We don't know. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, favorite lines. Uh, Valel and General Zod have a great little face-off at the beginning of the episode. Uh, Valel says, 
your willingness to weaponize Doomsday and against your fellow Kryptonians proved with finality what you truly are. General Zod replies, What I am is Krypton's last chance at sustaining our civilization. Valel says, You're delusional! You will never be Krypton's savior, Drew, because you are already its undoing. And General okay. Zod counters with that, saying, I suggest you land my ship swiftly and hide well, because I intend to use every resource, every Sagittare, and weapon on Krypton to hunt your rebellion down. Good. Valel counters, We welcome the attempt. Asshole. <laughs> yeah, I liked <laughs> that. That was, that was that, great. Because that's very uncharacteristic. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was funny. So thank you to IMDb. Yes. Uh, we do have um, – that way I can participate. Yay. General Saad says to Seg, you think you're him? You think you're the man of steel? You are no Superman. You are nothing. That was a good line. Which, thought, which I thought of the famous – I knew Jack John Kennedy. Yes, you sir or no John Kennedy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was a, that. Uh, well, you just did a Lloyd Benson reset. Yes, <laughs> very <indeed>. nice. <laughs> yeah, go look that one up, kids. Uh, that, that's a little. That's a little bit of uh, uh, politics and uh, a while back. Um, Nissa Vex and Adam have a good thing. You, we, we, you mentioned this line earlier. Uh, Nissa goes, "How are you doing?" And Adam replies. Oh, these Kryptonian sedatives are our party. So that's one perk of being paralyzed. Never walk again, but I think I can see sound. <laughs> that is very good. That was good. Uh-huh. And uh, any uh, other lines? Um, just, uh, we've already kind of talked about that, but I love the um, Adam Strange saying, look, hey, Val made me legs yep. uh, braces. He made me leg braces. Anyway, look. Hey, I can walk. It's a GD Christmas miracle. Right. Anyway, that's besides the point. I got a jetpack. You know what that means? And Segal says, "Tell me, Adam." Adam says, "I can means I can fly, bitches." And he hits the ceiling. That's funny. That's yeah, funny. that was that was a very funny that scene. Was, that yes. was great. Segal, I have to I have to talk about this line because it was such a big line, especially if you're a Superman geek. General, would you care to step outside? Yes, that was really, really which, good. Which uh, obviously was an iconic line, um, at first uttered by Christopher Reeve in Superman mm -hmm. 2 against the Terrence Stamp General Zod. Yes. Uh, it's yeah. one, of, one of the greatest moments in that movie. Um, yeah, and it was a nice callback. Right. I won't read it all. But, Super, Supergirl uh, actually reset that line, too, not yes. too long ago, um, where Supergirl tells this um, a different not General Zod, but someone else that was a general. She goes, General, yeah. would you like to step outside? Right. So that was good. Um, so it was cool to see them. And, of course, he's standing there with his big um, – Segel standing there with his big um, L uh, crest. Yes. The Superman, Superman logo. Emblem, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I mean – So it was uh, cool. Very cool moment. There – um, IMDb has the whole yeah. segment, and so I won't read all of it. Yeah, but um, with Lobo and Segal, and Lobo is always funny on this show. Yes, and I will just give you the initial: the main man is talking. Why are you interrupting? No one interrupts the main man when he's talking. Your job is to stand there, look pretty, and listen. I explain how you're going to help me. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> and I. I thought a little bit of um, Matt Smith's doctor. Where he goes, what's the point of me being clever if you're not here to see it? Exactly. <laughs> so, yes. That was a good line. Mm -hmm. uh, I had my own Lobo line that I liked. Oh, good. Um, it's a different one. I was going to choose that one, but I chose this one instead. Mm -hmm. uh, Lobo says, uh, tell you what, you lead me to Brainiac, and I will deliver you to the, the, that ugly little potato that you call a son, safe and sound, and mostly, I said mostly, in one piece. Yeah, I thought that was great, too. That was great, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always fun to hear from. And then um, there was a nice little twist from Lida. I like this line. General Zod, it's time you kneel before Kandor. Yes, that was a very good Using line. his catchphrase against him. Well played, Lida. Yes. Very, very well played. That was a good one. All right. Any other lines that you liked? No. I'm going to let you go first on ratings. Okay, ratings. I actually like this one. Okay. Um, I realize, um, and maybe you know, maybe it's just you know we're coming to different perspectives here. 
They were setting up season three. I get that. But we got closure on the General Zod storyline. And I thought it was a very effective way to kind of take him off the board for a while, at least. Obviously, he could potentially come back. Yeah. Um, but it takes him off the board, and it was a very ironic, fitting way, given what we'd seen earlier. So I, so I thought, as far as that goes, I was approving of that. I thought they did a good job. I give it 9 out of 10 strange jetpacks. You see what I did there? Strange yes, jetpacks. Yes, very nice. Yep. Good. Um, yeah, I... Um... And I'm succeed. not as much as you. I, I yeah. gave it eight out of ten um, Hawkman silhouettes in the sky. Okay, but now then, I'm, I'm or not sure is it Hawkman? Yeah, or is exactly. it Parademons? Ooh. Right. Yeah. So yeah, well done. You like my little uh, little? I did. I I, I hope it's. Uh, I would, in my mind, they're you know yeah. the Hawkman. Right. But I think that's a really really. Yeah. Um, nice thought. Yeah, so, Grant, good Grant, job. Yeah, Grant Morrison was the one in the in the miniseries Final Crisis. He's the one that kind of tied that Omega symbol with Dark mm-hmm. Side, and it's kind of yeah. car- carried forward. Yeah, um, no, I think that's good. Yeah, so um, especially if you're reading the the current comic Justice League Odyssey, which kind of uh, revives Dark Side and gives him back to full power, oh, okay. uh, you get to see that Omega symbol quite a bit in that one. So okay, I'll have to check that out. Yep. So uh, just uh, but yeah. So okay. Obviously, you didn't like it as much as me. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and I get why you explained yourself very well in that regard. Yeah, so. and I understand why you too. And I do think it's. I was actually um, hoping that we would be closer in numbers. Right. Um, like and hair. No one had Woody Allen in the uh, bingo card, but there's that scene in Annie Hall where um, she says. He says, God, we barely have sex only two, three times a week. And she says, and we have to have sex all the time, two or three times a week. <laughs> so I was hoping you and I both would be like the same number. Yeah. And, and you know, just for different perspectives. So, yeah. Yeah. Good all stuff. Right. All right. Uh, Phantom Zone news. Obviously, yes. the, obviously, the big news here this week Krypton was canceled by sci fi. Surprise. Uh, we know the ratings have been down. Um, mm-hmm. Deadly Class was canceled not too long ago by Sci-Fi for a very similar rating, so I kind of expected this. I was not surprised. Yeah. Uh, Sci-Fi has this tendency, like especially recently, if we don't own the property, yeah, and if it's not pulling in ratings for us, we will be more than happy to cancel it. And yeah, that's and what they, wonder, that's what they do with Krypton here. And I wonder, Charles, um, they. They own a lot of um, rights to reruns. Yes, I'm sure that costs them very little money. Uh, they they have a lot. They have their whole um, catalog of of cheesy, you know, monster movie ripoffs they've right. done. Right, low and budget, so, low budget. Yeah. yeah, and and so you wonder, um, you know, the. Uh, Penn and Teller did a whole series called um bull crap right bullshit i guess yeah, we could yeah, say yeah. bullshit yeah and when they were gonna go make new ones showtime said the ratings on your reruns are the same as in new episodes so there's no financial gain for us yes to do new episodes and while that stinks it is a business so i mean if showtime says I mean, if sci-fi goes, right. whether we show a cheesy movie or a new episode, we get basically the same ratings. Why would we spend money? Um, and that's because they're not right. they are not a premium network. They don't yeah. want to be a premium network. They don't want to be FX or no. AMC. This is you a, know, where, yeah, yeah. This, this is a network that not too long ago was airing wrestling instead, yeah. of, sci- on, instead of science fiction shows. Right. So – they had actually, you know, like, obviously they've had a reputation for quite a while that they would cancel. You'd just get into shows and they would cancel them maybe a season or two in. Yeah. And they had recently started to overcome that a little bit. They yeah. were renewing shows like The Magicians yeah. and building up some goodwill. And then now they're kind of sliding back into their old bad habits of pulling the plugs on shows. And again, yeah, if they don't, it seems like... 
they want shows that they own Mm -hmm. and so that they can control. The question is, is anybody going to watch them? Yeah. And, you know, Krypton, they buried it in a horrible time slot, Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Yeah. So it was very low profile. Um, Didn't see a lot of advertising apart from in comic books for the Mm show. Um, And then they end up canceling not just Krypton. They pulled the plug on the Lobo spinoff as well. Yeah. Before it even gets off the ground. Now, the good news is, is that um, they're shopping the show around. Right. And obviously the two obvious places it could go right now, DC Universe, the DC Universe streaming service, because, hey, uh, right now DC Universe is already airing season one. And they're mm-hmm. supposed to get season two. So um, continuing the show, DC Universe needs new shows. You've got a show already ready to go. Um, it just needs yeah. picked up. So mm-hmm. it seems like a no-brainer to me that it would go on DC Universe. But we'll see. Yeah, and and I the other thing, I if I was running sci-fi, right. um, I would – I understand – the concept of we don't want to do original programming every night. Right. But I would pick a night of original programming and I would say, and I would do enough. Well, that used to be Friday nights for them. Right. And that would be the, uh, where, and that's where I'd show the magicians. Yeah. I, then I would go to, uh, you know, Krypton. Then I would go to, the expanse then i would go to you know maybe a warehouse 13 reboot or wh- whatever you wanted to do so that you know 48 weeks you know let's take off a few weeks for holidays but you know 40 or 45 weeks a year a new series shows up the same night or you know two night two shows on a night so from you know 8 to 10 or 9 to 11 eastern time Every week, you're going to get two new hours of original sci-fi uh, shows. TV. Yeah, yeah. Like the, I subscribe to uh, CBS All Access. I did it for Discovery, right? And then we ended up watching The Good Fight, and so and you got Picard um, coming up. Yeah, Picard's coming up. Uh, Twilight you know, Zone. I haven't, yeah. I haven't watched the Twilight Zones, but I've heard they're good. Right. You know, so there's a you you can do that model where um, it's not appointment TV, but you know, oh yeah, because I will tell you what I have to do, Charles, is I have to go, I Google new series sci-fi, then look for it versus immediately flipping my TV grid to Fridays or Wednesdays and let's look where it is. Yeah. Like, yeah, so I mean, for what it's worth, that's free advice. I know. Okay. And it almost seems like at the moment, BBC America has better sci-fi than the sci-fi channel. Oh, absolutely. They do. You know, they're sharing Star Trek reruns. They've got Doctor Who. Um, you know, yeah. they had Orphan Black on not too long ago. Yeah. So it's very frustrating. You know, like It is very frustrating. Sci-fi just doesn't want, like you said, they don't want to be a premium service. No, they just want to land like be lazy, um, make the cheap buck in basic cable. Yeah, and I think it's ultimately cost going to cost them viewers because after especially show, canceling shows like The Expanse, you know now Krypton, you know Save Krypton was trending on Twitter. Obviously, yeah. uh, this is after, of course, when the when The Expanse was canceled, they had to save The Expanse uh, campaign. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's, it's very frustrating. It's like, they just don't want to succeed mm-hmm. and just, and, or at least, yeah, they, or you, like they, they just want the, the fast buck. They don't care. the they don't care about their brand. Right. Really, and, really. and it should be, and I think as long as we're making money, that's all that matters. We don't care about the brand. Yeah. And it should be a shame as much as we love um, fantasy and science fiction, right, right. Um, you know, you should have that. Um, and maybe it's just too expensive, but, you know, old time tunnel episodes 
uh, Lost in Space, uh, maybe Star Trek's too expensive, but um, Man from Uncle, the you know Fantastic Voyage, well, you, um, you know Comet, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Yeah, if you watch yeah. the if you watch the Comet Digital Channel, yeah, they have a lot of that stuff. They have like Babylon Five. Yeah, you know they you know just a lot of you know lower budget or like from back in the day. Yeah. You know, 20 years ago or more, Dark Shadows, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, Comet is a better science fiction network than sci-fi at the moment. And that's just silly. And, and it, it is. It is. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I recommend Comet, though, if you want to check that out. Uh, I will. Um, they've had a lot of cool shows on Comet. Um, another place that, that Krypton could survive potentially is also... Um, Warner Media's new HBO Max uh, streaming service that they're coming out with. Uh, yes. We know some DC Universe shows are going to be carried there as well already. Uh, June Patrol has a little... Um, they're going to be at least featuring Doom Patrol on HBO Max in addition to DC Universe. So, oh, may- so maybe there could be a deal that to kind of defer costs or whatever that maybe it could be a joint production that Krypton gets picked up. It airs on DC Universe and HBO Max. We don't know. Kind of like Doom Patrol is doing uh, because that got a second season. And um, so at the moment, it's not the end. But uh, we'll see if it gets picked up. I would think DC Universe would be the... So I think everybody needs to forget about lobbying sci-fi. Yeah, I Folk, think so. The, just forget about it. They're not interested. Focus your no, efforts. In, focus your efforts instead on lobbying DC Universe and HBO Max, Warner Media, mm-hmm. to to pick yeah. up Krypton. I think that's a much more better use of your time, personally. Uh, I agree. I think that is the very smart thing to do. Yeah. So fo- focus your hashtags there. All right. Um, mm-hmm. We don't have any fan mail, sadly, but uh, yes. um, hopefully, you know, we'll, when we talk about other stuff, uh, we'll get mm-hmm. some fan mail. But if you want to reach us, you can reach us. At phantomzonecast at gmail.com. That's phantomzonecast at gmail.com. You can always drop us a line. Let us know your thoughts about the Krypton cancellation, the Lobo pre cancellation, uh, or anything else that we're going to be talking about. Uh, maybe the boys, because we're going to be talking about the boys, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, you can reach us on Twitter at phantomzonecast on Twitter, or Facebook, the Phantom Zone Podcast, or Instagram at Phantom Zone Podcast. Mm-hmm. And I uh, would definitely appreciate you doing that. Uh, Jesse, where can they reach you? So you can find me at Jesse Jackson DFW on Twitter. Uh, I am on Facebook as well. Uh, Jesse Jackson, do a search, Louisville, Texas. You can hear me talk about Doctor Who. And I am in the middle of doing my homework, um, Colony in Space. I've yes. started watching it. Uh, and I'm already, uh, you know, uh, I see Joe's charms. Uh, I'll save that discussion Ooh, uh, okay. later, but yeah, Charles and I, uh, talk about Joe, Joe Grant. The, yes. Yeah. Joe, uh, Charles and I talk, um, about once a month, Dr. Who, the other two to three weeks a month, uh, Charles is having guest, uh, companions. It's been a lot of fun, uh, coming up. After Labor Day, Charles, you can hear Charles and I talk about our initial mutual passion, the Titans, based on the DC Universe On Demand uh, Titan series. Uh, a trailer came out. They didn't show us a lot, but there was a little bit of a tease. Right. And so Charles and I will be talking about that. And then well, you where, can where, also... where, where, where can they talk about that? Titan Talk. There you go. Uh, Titan, talk, the our... Titan, Titan Talk, the Titans podcast. Yes. And then uh, I went this weekend to see Blinded by the Light, the film. Oh, what'd you think uh, of that? It was really well done. It was. It, you were I, happy. I'm curious. I, I'm curious to see if someone who isn't a Springsteen fan what they think of it. Okay. Uh, because you know it it is truly a love letter to you know someone Springsteen fandom. Uh, the female lead played the young Cersei. In the Game of Thrones, Ooh. you know, prequel work shows. Yeah. And she's really good in the movie. She comes across, um, she's very charming. Hopefully and more likable than she was as Cersei. Yes. And since it's set in the, like, 87, she has that whole 
80s uh, look about her, which was yeah. very cute. She's very cute, and she's a big political free Nelson Mandela. Yeah. Uh, it's, she's a really cool character. Cool. And you can hear me that talk about that on Set Lusting Bruce, the Bruce Springsteen podcast, where I talk to Bruce Springsteen fans from around the world. Charles, how can they – where can they hear your fine work and read all about these kind of topics that we're discussing? All right. Obviously, uh, in addition to the Fam Zone podcast, you can reach me at Charles Skaggs on Twitter, at Charles Skaggs on Instagram, Facebook, of course, Charles Skaggs in Hill- Hilliard, Ohio, and uh, my blog of Geeky Things. Come on, you. Damn good coffee. And hot. Damn good coffee and hot, where I talk about all the stuff we talk about here on the Phantom Zone podcast, including Krypton, including the boys, all kinds of comic book sci-fi news, news of my other podcasts that do for Southgate Media Group, including the aforementioned Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast that I do with Jesse and a bunch of um, wonderful special guest companion co-host, guest hosts. And, hey, we got a new T-shirt. So if you're in the mood to rock some new Doctor Who gear, uh, check it out. Uh, well, you can uh, check out uh, Damn Good Coffee and Hot, and I've got links to – so you can get all the that new spiffy T-shirt for Next Stop Everywhere. Yay! Um, and uh, also the aforementioned Titan Talk, the Titans podcast to do with Jesse. Like Jesse said, uh, after Labor Day, Titans Season 2 is back on DC Universe. That launches – Looking forward to that. There looks to be lots of cool stuff, and uh, by based on the first trailer of that, so I'm finishing up my Titans season one rewatch. So I'll be ready to go when we talk season two, and uh, hope everybody comes over, uh, or at least in addition to this one, obviously uh, comes over and uh, here's Jesse and I continue. Uh, talking about Titans on DC Universe. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So please check Absolutely. that out. And of course, Ghost with the Twin Peaks podcast to do with Zan Sprouse, uh, wife of comic book artist Chris Sprouse, where we talk about all things Twin Peaks, David Lynch, and uh, Zan's a wonderful person, as Jesse knows. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of fun. So I hope you check that out as well. Yes. All right. Uh, so next time in the Phantom Zone, what are we going to talk about? Well, because we, Krypton's done, right? No, yes. we, got, we got something else planned. So next time in the Phantom Zone, we're going to talk The Boys Season 1 review. So we're going to review um, episodes 1 through 8 of The Boys Season 1. That's the Amazon Prime video series based on the Dynamite Entertainment comic book series by Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Jesse's been a, a surprising fan of this series, and uh, I've I've uh, I've read the entire comic book series, uh, so I know pretty much the entire storyline. But um, I'm now five episodes. I only got three more to go, so I'll be doing a big uh, cram marathon this week. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I'll be ready, and uh, we'll be here to uh, talk the boys season one, the first eight episodes. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. What do you think, Jesse? Oh, I think it's going to be absolutely a lot of fun. Uh, what was <laughs> – yesterday uh, we drove to Tyler um, to see Linda's big brother, um, his oldest daughter and son-in-law were there with their twins. Yeah. And the twins are like three months old, so we were loving on the little kids and having a blast. But on the way there – um, my brother-in-law Clayton and my sister-in-law Mary, I was like, hey, so what have you guys binged lately? We watched some show from Amazon called The Boys, and we <laughs> loved it. And I was like, wow. Uh, Clayton, I'm not surprised. Clayton is a big sci- science fiction fan. I mean, you know, he loved Battlestar Galactica and The Expanse and all this stuff. Right. Uh, but Mary was like, I just really loved it. She was like explaining it to me about, you know, this is a different world and everything. So right. I, I was really impressed that something – I think I think of her as mainstream, right? She yes. is not someone you would think of that would go – Be into you know, that, that, be into that show, yeah. Yeah, and she just loved it. 
So mm. I think that's pretty slick. So yeah, I'm from, looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah, from what I understand, um, Amazon has said that this is one of their highest rated shows ever on mm-hmm. Amazon Prime Video, one of their original shows. So um, are so, you a little surprised? I am surprised. I'm surprised at how well, and we'll talk about this obviously next week. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm kind of surprised at how popular this show has been. Uh, a lot of people seemed really into it. I didn't think anybody would hear about it. And mm-hmm. uh, it seemed to really take off and have a bit of a following. So hopefully that carries over here to the Phantom Zone. Yes. And uh, so if you got anybody, if you know anybody that's into the boys and wants to um, hear us talk about that, we are more than happy to oblige you. So come on back next week here on the Phantom Zone. We're going to talk the boys season one review. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, Jesse, anything else before we sign off? No, I, I'm just excited. Um, you know, it was fun talking Krypton with you. Right. Uh, you know, I, I we miss Karen, but I'm so glad Karen has let me play right. in the playground with you. And so now then, um, looking forward to talking the boys. Um, this is going to be a fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think so. And, uh, you know, for anybody wondering about Karen – uh, last update I got from her earlier this week was that she's back in the hospital. Oh no. And, um, she says she's not sure if she thinks she's going to be there for a while. So, mm. uh, everybody please give Karen Lindsay, one of our, uh, previous co-hosts here on the Phantom Zone, your kind thoughts. Um, I don't mean to be a bit of a downer as we sign off, but, no, no, uh, no. but I want to express our best wishes to Karen and, Hopefully she gets out of the hospital soon because that's always a good thing when you're out of the hospital. So, Absolutely. All right. So uh, keep Karen in your thoughts if you would. Come on back next time for the Boys Season 1 review here on the Phantom Zone. We're going to talk the boys. Again, it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, should be a really interesting discussion if you watch the show. And we'll see you next time right here on the Phantom Zone podcast. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>